All right, in this video, I'm gonna be repairing this late 2008 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro logic board. Now, I actually got the machine that this board came in uh, off eBay quite some time ago, actually. And uh, I think I only paid like 50 or $60 for it. And uh, it is completely non-functional at this point. So uh, I'll go ahead and plug in the MagSafe connection for you right now. And I'll show you what it does. All right, so as you can see, the MagSafe is plugged in. Um, we get no green light. And uh, yeah, of course, the board won't turn on like this. Now, I have already been looking at the schematic ahead of time before I started this video, and I have already actually figured out what the issue is. But um, if you go ahead and take a look at the schematic here, see I've got it open right here. We've got the main power input, which should come through R6905 here, then go into this uh, little IC, which has two diodes in it. And this basically takes uh, the power from the battery or the power from the DC import and puts it into one rail which goes into this boost controller which uh, provides power to the SMC and a lot of other places on the system. So uh, basically what the issue is is there is no connection between pin 2 of this resistor and pin 1 of this diode. Now this might be bad too, I'm not sure, but for, what, for right now I'm just going to connect pin 2 to pin 1 of this and uh, yeah, and then hopefully that'll get it working. If not, I'll replace this, and that should get it working. And I'll also check uh, the connection between the end of that and uh, this chip right here. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, get the uh, camera on a tripod here, and we'll go ahead and begin the process. So I'll be right back. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is measure the voltages on the points that I think are uh, freaking spider here, whatever. Um, first, I'm going to... Uh, measure the points on the board and make sure and see where the voltage is getting to and where it's not getting to. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the voltage on this resistor, which uh, as you can see we are getting the proper 16 point whatever volts that it should have. And we're getting it on both sides here. So if we check that pin on the diode, which is this little IC right here, you can see we've just got 0.4 volts, which is quite strange. Now that could either mean uh, there's some sort of short going on here or uh, that there's just no connection at all. But um, I think it's the latter because now I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and uh, we'll check the continuity on it. So if we go ahead and put one lead on the end of that resistor and another lead on the end of that chip or that diode. Uh, you can see we're getting absolutely no connection at all. So uh, let me check it to ground and make sure it's not shorted. And it's not. Let me make sure this side's not shorted. And it's not. Let me make sure none of these are shorted where they're not supposed to be. Uh, and that's the pins on the U6990 IC. So let me check that here. Okay, so the only ones that are supposed to be connected to ground are this one, which it is, and none of the others should be. So that's on the same rail. These two should have continuity, and they do. So we'll check it to here, check it to here. We're getting continuity to the diode, but the diode is not getting continuity to that resistor where they're power is coming from. So I think that's our problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and solder a jumper wire from the proper point of that resistor to the proper pin of that uh, little diode pack there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my soldering uh, iron set up and resume the video. All right, so I've now got my soldering iron set up and uh, I've got my, my little piece of jumper wire right here. Um, so what we're going to do first, of course, is just get the wire uh, ready to solder to the proper point on the board. So go ahead and stretch it out a little bit here so it's not as curved. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get the soldering iron here. 
and put a little bit of solder on the end of this wire. So let me get do that real fast here. Alright, so that should be good for that. And um, now what we're going to do is solder this to the end of that resistor where it needs to connect to. So I want to make sure I can see that RK. Alright, good. So the resistor we're connecting it to is this one right here. Uh, we're connecting it to this point on it. So, um, actually let me just verify that real fast. Yep, that's right. So, um, let me go ahead and solder it in there. Alright, and that looks to be in pretty well. Now, this one is going to be hard because the place we need to solder it to is literally right next to it. So um, I might just cut it very short and kind of put it just like this and uh, hopefully that will work. What I might try to do actually is bend it. Kind of like that. So let me make sure it's on this resistor a little bit better first. Alright, there we go. So I'll do that. Then I'll just put a little bit of solder right on that part of the wire, which will melt the insulation. Okay, that seems good. And then we'll go ahead and solder it to the pin. Isn't exactly as easy as I was expecting. What I might need to do is just add a little bit of flux and maybe a little bit of solder to it. Just like that. There we go. That looks like it's in. So I'll cut the excess wire off of here. And that should do it. So uh, let me go ahead and check and make sure there are no shorts here. Okay, and that looks like it's connected where it needs to go, I think. Yep, that looks about right. Let me make sure it's not connected to here. And it's not, so, uh... That should do it, so let's go ahead and give it a test. So I'll be right back. Alright, so I've gotten the uh, board ready to test, so you can see a little rework right there. So basically, 
This is a very small rework right here, but uh, it takes that that pin of that resistor. This is going to get hard to focus in on, but it basically takes that one pin on that resistor and takes it to that far that farthest pin on this IC right here. Um, this is a that diode pack I showed you in the schematic, and it just connects it right to that pin there. And um, yeah, so now that that's all connected, let's go ahead and plug it in and see if we get a green light. All right, so here's our mag safe. And look at that, we got a green light. So now all that's left to do is to get this installed into the chassis uh, and turn it on and make sure it actually turns on and works. So I'm gonna get that installed and I will be right back. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the board installed in the chassis. Now, before I actually test this machine, uh, I do wanna say that I have actually already tested this and it ended up not turning on or working after I uh, did that rework you saw in the previous clip. Now, what the issue actually ended up being uh, was a bad capacitor. Now, I didn't actually figure this out uh, based on the schematic. I actually found this out based on a forum post I found. Uh, and apparently, it is very common for this capacitor to fail. Now, I don't have the schematic out with me yet, but uh, I'll just show you where it is on this second board. I actually uh, got this board off eBay as well. Uh, because I thought that this IC was bad. Um, if I could focus it in. That IC right there, as you can see, it looks a little bad because uh, I have been uh, soldering on it. Uh, but uh, that ended up not being bad. And the problem ended up being the capacitor located right here. So this is a 330 microfarad capacitor. And it's basically one of the main uh, filter capacitors for the CPU power rail. So uh, without that uh, capacitor working properly, uh, the CPU is not getting the proper smooth power that it should be getting. Uh, and therefore the machine just couldn't turn on at all. Now uh, I did replace the capacitor on this board and actually this board had the exact same problem as this board uh, with that capacitor. This one actually showed a green light uh, but didn't turn on and basically um, ended up doing exactly what this board was doing <clears throat> um, after I completed the repair. So, um, yeah, so for that, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the bottom on this machine and uh, I'll go ahead and turn it on and show you that it does power on and work. I don't have a uh, hard drive in it at the moment uh, because I don't have one uh, with an OS installed, but uh, I will turn it on and show you that it does boot to the white EFI screen and uh, I can get into the boot menu. Uh, so you can see that it's plugged in with the green light on the charger. So let's go ahead and turn it on. See the front LED comes on. I'll turn the option key here. And as you can see, it uh, powers right on. All right, so you, you can see that we are in the boot menu now, but since there are no drives connected, there are no options shown here. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the machine is fully working. And uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this is a fully functional machine. So that has been the repair of this late 2008 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Hope you enjoyed this video.